Air fried Cornish hens, and quite possibly one of the best meals on the planet for two people. And we're going to do them tonight in two different devices. I'm going to do one in the Ninja Max XL air fryer, and the other one in the Instapot Vortex 6. I'm John Sanders. There I am right there. Also known as Jelly 007. Let's see how they do. What we're working with tonight, two fresh, never frozen, whole Cornish hens. I got them at Publix, and it, that hasn't been the case all my life. Normally, when you bought a Cornish hen, it was frozen. And you can still get them that way, but a lot of stores are carrying them fresh now. I've seen them in others. Now, if you're going to do it with a frozen one, you'll obviously have to thaw it out for what we're doing tonight. So I'm going to go over a few things I'm going to do right quick. So when I come back, a lot of this will be done. And it is. I'm going to open those up. I'm going to take out the giblets or whatever's inside, and, and, and they usually do have that. I'm going to rinse them off lightly in my sink, even though they don't recommend that with chicken anymore. I'm going to. I rinsed off and ready. I've removed the giblets, which were neck bones and gizzards and liver. I'm not using them, but, but you could. But here's what I want to show. I'm going to spray the inside of this with some avocado oil, and then I'm going to sprinkle lorries. Now, sprinkle some lorries. Now, if you got a seasoning you like better than lorries, by all means use it. I'm gonna tell you that works excellent. And some black pepper, there's you'll it's really hard to beat. But I'm gonna spray that in there, spray it, sprinkle some in, and then I'm gonna start getting the chickens ready on the outside, which if you notice how these wings are flat or hanging out, they're, they're gonna burn, not a big deal. You're not gonna eat them. It just kinda doesn't look good. So what I normally do is I tuck them back like this. I'll put them like this. So when it's laying in there like this, and I do always do, I'm gonna do breast up, it'll look like that. But the thing is, here's how I start the chickens out. And you'll notice on this one, by the way, that, that one's broke. So we may get, this one may flop out on us, but it's okay if it does. It really doesn't matter. Now, I'm going to start out on the board with the chickens like this. I'll spray them with avocado oil, sprinkle them with lorries and black pepper or whatever you're using, and then we'll let them sit while these preheat. And once those get preheated, then, when I set them in, and I'm going over this because I don't want to try and do it while I'm after these are preheated, I'm going to flip them over from this position. They're already coated with everything. I'm going to flip them over, drop them in the basket. Once they're in the basket, I'm going to spray them again with Pam or with the avocado oil, uh, hit them with some large black pepper, and that way, if, if you try and do it now, my point is, if you try and do it now, you got your chicken sitting here, it looks good on the backside. If, and, and if you try and do it at this point, when you go to set the chicken in, you kind of mess up your presentation. And, and whether that matters or not, you know, I don't know, but it does to me. There are the Cornish hens, and they're prepared as we discussed. I've already sprayed both baskets with the avocado oil right here. So we're gonna hit roast, air roast. It's already at one hour for 375, which is what we want. Now, the, the Instant Pot has to preheat before it'll start counting its time. The Ninja starts right away, but we'll hit start on this one. So it's already, it's going, but it has to preheat before it starts counting. This one, we're gonna hit air roast. It's already at 375. We're gonna take that to one hour and it might, it needs a bunch of pressing because it was at 15 minutes. So we're going to get that to one hour. And we're not going by time, by the way. We're going by my thermopan. We're going to be looking for around 165 or so. So we're going to start that one up. And as you can see, it immediately starts counting, and this one hasn't yet. So when those preheat, we're going to look at doing the next step. Let's do it. And you'll probably hear it sizzle right now. And it does. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and put this one in too. That kind of like cuts off some of that noise. And they both sizzle a little bit. I was expecting a little more, but no big deal. It, it, they, they, it did sear the backside, and that's uh, you know, not a bad thing. So we're gonna spray those. 
I'm going to use my big can of lorries and I'm just going to sprinkle them. And I'll try and show you before I put it in about what I put on them. But let me tell you, this is somewhat salty. And if you don't like salt, you would definitely have to adjust that amount. But that's how I do them right there. In fact, we're going to do salt and or this lorry salt and some pepper. So I'm going to get that in there. Like I said, it's not a big deal. It's, it's easy to do. That's the biggest thing about an air fryer. It is really the way, uh, if you ask me, it's the way of the future. Again, I've said this before, they will be designing kitchens or, or ovens or something. You know, the, you don't need a huge oven. You need this. So I'm going to get off of that. We're going to put that one in. Put that one in. I'm not flipping it or anything. You know what? Did my Nope, my wings stayed fairly well tucked under. Well, I'm going to go ahead and set this back to an hour. And that's it's as simple as that. I'm going to set this one back to an hour. And again, we're off and running both of them at 375. Let's check. That's 375. That was 375. Let's see how they look. And I don't know. We'll look at them in 30 minutes. We're right at the 30 minute mark. Let's take a look. And there's what the Ninja looks like. It's getting brown, it looks good. And there's what the, uh, whoops. That's what the Instant Pot or the Vortex 6 looks like. And it is hot. In fact, that's what we're about to do is check some temps. And that skin is crispy. But I see 154, 153. I'm going to pull it back kind of slow, but I, it doesn't matter. I saw 154, and that's the not a, we got to have more than that. And I'm going to try and get a rating on this, 158, 157. We're in the 150s on both of them, and, and I did see 154 on that one. I'm not going to leave them out long. That is the beauty of an air fryer, and you can, and you can pull them out and do what you want to. But anyhow, we're going to get that going back, and... Uh, take a look at them again and say, I don't know, 10, maybe 15 minutes. Okay, both of them are at 40 minutes of cook time. We're going to take a look. I'm going to pull that one out and that one out. Let's see if you can see what I'm doing. I think you can. Let's take a look. And that is... 175, the lowest number I'm getting. One's, whoops, I went, I went all the way through. <laughs> so 170 is as low as I saw, and that's in the breast. I don't want to mess up the chicken, but I am good with that at 40, at uh, 40 minutes. So let's make sure you can see what I'm doing again, and we'll check this one. 170, 169, 162. I did see a little lower number than I want. That was going back in for a minute. I'm going to check this one and make sure it's good. I'm going to leave that one in for another, I don't know, two or three minutes. So I'll be back. I'm going to keep checking this one as if I find any low temps, but I don't think so. It looks good. All right, we are about four minutes longer than that one, maybe three or four. I, I don't know the times were exact. But what we're going to do is, and, and even with this one, all I ever do on a chicken is look for anything above, say, 160, because carryover will take it to 165. So you just try and find the thickest part of the chicken, or that's what I do, and then you ease it real slow, give it time to read, and in the lowest I've saw was 175. And I'm good with 170. That's what we were there. I mean, it's it's not a we're 10 degrees above. It's not going to be dry. It's going to be delicious. Now you might check it in a couple of places. You wouldn't want to take this to 200 degrees, don't get me wrong, but 170 is a is an excellent temp. And we're I guess I'm trying to show how to use an instant read thermometer. And, and it does mean a lot. You just find the thickest spot. Don't go off here on the side. I see a lot of people do it. You just kind of go real slow, 
right in the thickest part of the chicken and kind of watch for your lower stomach. There's ours, 168. I mean, 167. There's nothing wrong with that. That's perfect. In fact, that is a perfectly cooked chicken. So <laughs> we're fixing to put that on a plate, and uh, I'm going to eat some of it. I'll be back. Royal, right there they are, and both of them look excellent. You can, I don't have to tell you that. Uh, perspectively, the Instant Pot's here, the Ninja is here, and look at this. I mean, I don't know if you can tell, but look at the fat. I mean, if you're looking for a healthy way to cook a chicken or a Cornish hen, the, an air fryer is going to be really hard to beat. So, quite honestly, I'm fixing to make some pictures for... Uh, and then I'm going to sit down and eat this, and I'm going to show you how it looks on the inside. And I'll be back. Okay, so I, I cut a leg off <laughs> and realized the camera wasn't running. So what we're going to do, instead of cutting one, we're just going to pull one, because I pulled the bone out while I was trying to cut it. And you can see the juices are running clear. Everything looks excellent. That is a very, very good chicken. I, again, for two people, this is, you get no waste. I mean, most, you know, pretty much. I mean, two people can eat a Cornish hen, where a lot of times you take a whole chicken, they can't. So that's the one from the Ninja. Making sure my camera's running. It's got me paranoid now. Camera's running. So I'm just going to touch that one right there, and then we're going to break that leg right there off. And... I don't need to tell you, that is a extremely look, good looking chicken. It, it's not just good looking chicken, it is good chicken. And uh, I'm happy that uh, Publix and people like that are starting to uh, carry them. So we'll slice into the breast right quick. And you can see that looks excellent right there. We'll go on down a little closer and again, that's it. And then, honestly, if, if it were just one chicken and two people, I would probably just break this right in half like this. And, I mean, it's not as pretty that way. It might be a little prettier to uh, do it the way I was doing it because you get the rib cage and all. But I'll show it to you. I mean, it, uh, it, this, again, it, two people, this is perfect. We're going to slice this right here to make sure the ninjas look good also. And uh, as you can see, it does. I'll move that where you can. Try and keep from uh, doing anything dumb with my knife. Uh, I don't know what else you'd ask for. That's an excellent, excellent, excellent looking chicken. And I honestly cannot wait <laughs> to start eating it. And that's about what, I, that's what I'm about to do. So, anyhow... I hope uh, you'll try the uh, Cornish hen and either one of them. They both did great. Now, this one browned a little better, but there's nothing wrong with either one of them, as you can see. Anyhow, I'm going to see if I can get in front of this camera. And uh, thank you all for watching. I love you all all. Y'all come back to see me. Cook you a Cornish hen and split it with your uh, better half. Y'all have a good night. Bye-bye.